So our fence now has both runners installed and slides nicely on the table saw. Now we can turn our attention to making the rear fence. The rear fence is uh, made up of two boards that are 7 8 inch thick by 48 inches wide. It makes a nice long rear fence at the back of your cross cut sled and will allow you to use a repeatable stop for uh, pretty good sized pieces. So let's do that now. So I've prepared the two boards that are going to make up the fence by jointing the face that's going to get glued together on the joiner. So we'll have a nice good glue joint. And after that assembly is dry, then we'll flatten the face that we'll use on the crosscut sled and square up the bottom on the joiner as well. Okay, with our fence piece glued up, I'm just going to rip it to width, approximately three and a half inches. And then we'll move on to the joiner and the planer and square it all up. With the fence board ripped to width, now we're going to flatten out the face of the fence. And this step is crucial. This will be the area that your work pieces will line up against as you use the crosscut sled. So it's very important that we flatten out this face perfectly. And I'll do that here at the joiner. With the face of our board flat, we're now going to make a right angle, make sure that the bottom of the board, the bottom of the fence that will go onto the main board is 90 degrees to the face of the fence. So the part that we just flattened will go against the fence of the joiner. And I'm just going to mark this with a triangle to indicate that that's the right angle that we've created. So when we go over to the planer and make the opposing faces parallel, we'll know which way to orient the, the board through the planer. Now here at the planer, we're going to make the opposite side that we jointed parallel. So the side that we jointed is going to go down on the planer bed and it will make the top side parallel with the side that we trued up already. The last step in preparing the fence is to cut it to size on the table saw. The width of the fence is 48 inches long. Okay, the next step in the process is to raise the spinning blade up into your main board. You want to have it sort of centered over the blade because you don't want to cut the, the leading edge or the back edge. You just want to cut about 16 inches in the center of this board. So we're going to turn on the saw, raise the blade slowly, and then push it forward a little bit to make a kerf in our main board that will allow us to square up the fence against that kerf. Okay, the next step is to square the fence to that kerf that we just made. And the way I do that is I found something that fits snugly in to the kerf and it's actually two steel rulers. And they fit in there pretty well. And I have two drafting squares that will go up against that. And then down against the fence so I can position the fence at a square point, clamp it, and screw it down. So to keep these drafting squares in place while I do this operation, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. 
With the fence in the approximate position, I slide the squares from the inside against the rulers and make contact with the tape just so that they're on the same plane. Now I can pull the whole board off the back of the table saw and clamp the main fence in place while I screw it from underneath. After double checking that nothing's moved, that the uh, drafting squares are still against the rulers and this fence is still against the drafting squares, I'll screw down the fence. With the fence mounted to the main board, it's time to make that big handle that goes on the back of the fence. Now this serves two purposes. It strengthens the fence because you're going to end up cutting through it later. And then it also brings your hands up away from the max height of the blade. And we'll put a nice thick handle up there and you'll push on that handle and your hands will be well away from the blade. So it's a simple rectangle uh, with an added handle on top and it's eight and a half by six and a half inches. I'm just going to drill a couple of countersinks in the handle to mount it to the fence. So I'll clamp on the handle and then attach it from the rear with screws. Here's the piece that reinforces the front of the sled. Eventually we're going to cut all the way through here. So we need a piece on the front that will reinforce the main board after it's been cut. Now I'm going to mount the T-Track to the top of the rear fence. I'm just going to clamp a board to the front so that I know that the T-Track is flush along the front side of this fence. Here at the router table, we're going to take a piece of stock that's approximately one and three quarter inches by inch and a half and round over all four edges. And then we'll split it down the middle on the table saw and then we'll attach both halves to that handle that we put on the back of the crosscut sled. And this will give us a nice comfortable top handle to push the sled back and forth. I want to leave an area of about two inches on either end of the board that's not rounded over. So when I start the cut, I'll plunge in and then route this direction and then bring the piece out before I reach the end. And I just want to leave some flat sides on this piece so when I run it through the table saw to split it down the middle, I'll have some flat area to reference against my table saw fence. Now we'll cut both pieces to width on the table saw at eight and a half inches. Now these roundover pieces that we just made are glued to the main handle. Well that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking. See the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics. You can access all parts of the videos in one easy viewer. Check out the photo galleries of in process work, measured drawings, and finished projects. You can also download files associated with projects. So check it out at www.eaglelakewoodworking.com.